Before you watch the video, skip to the next part. Make sure that you stop. Why? Because I might save your money and time. We have Prepensa Prime subscription, which is like Netflix, but for placement preparation, upskilling, coding, and certifications. It has more than 200 plus courses like AI, ML, data science, and business cloud, full stack web development, CZ++, Java, Python, DSA, Compiler, coding, aptitude. Even as micro courses for companies like TCS, MPP, Wipro, Deloitte, ZS, Amazon, Cisco, Qualcomm, etc. So all problem solved just with one single. Subscription and 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 not just courses, just like a single subscription. We also have a prep and stuff placement cell that has more than 400 plus hiring partners, and we actually do refer you in all of these companies once you complete our track for this. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to talk about TCS Code Vita previous questions and answers. So as uh, when we have launched the video on TCS Code Vita and how to prepare. So we got a lot of requests from you guys on like uh, to solve some of the questions of the previous year. So we are starting this is the first video of the series and there are going to be a lot of videos for this. So simply we are going to start very first video on a simple note like I assume that a lot of you are beginners and you want to participate into the TCS code beta let's start with the easiest question uh, thing so without further ado so we'll start with the video and as you know as always uh, Prepinsta Prime uh, subscription is free for the top three commenters that we're going to pick so make sure you show the engagement on the video and also do let us know what kind of a videos or questions that you want us to solve and let you know all the uh, questions and answers as well all right so here's the first question that we have so Basically, as I said, this is like uh, these are the previous year questions that we're going to solve. And let's start with the very easiest one. I assume uh, this question, uh, pause the video and uh, read the question and try to solve it on your own or try to understand what we are taking here. So again, uh, I'm going to provide you the solution with all the different programming languages as well. So we're going to talk about Python, C++ and Java. So let's start with the question first. Here we have a little gel. Uh, jumbled up the order of the letters in our dictionary. So dictionary is like uh, not the dictionary in the programming language like Python. So it is a dictionary that we use or in program what they are referring it as a dictionary. Okay. So now uh, Jack uses this list to find the smallest lexographical string. So what is mean by the lexographical string is the order or the sequence of the word that you find in a dictionary. So for example, if you have a dictionary and uh, there are like, like uh, you're going to find uh, the words in the dictionary, then there's an order that we have, right? So alphabetical order that we have, let's say if you want to find small or short, so basically which word comes first. So as, as it's same, then you will compare whether the O will first come then or M. So in order like similarly, lexicographical string means like what is the order of sequence that you have to follow while follow, uh, finding these kind of words, okay? And that can be made out of the new order and new order means so initially we have the existing order but since Jill has jumbled up so this jumbled up uh, order has become our new order and you have to help him in terms of finding these strings so you are given string p that denotes the new order of the letters in the english so what are the letters in the english that we have all the characters between uh, a to z so these are going to be the letters that we have A, B, C, D up to Z and as a dictionary. Then you need to print the smallest lexicographic string from the given string S. So he's going to have one string S. For this string, we need to find that lexicographical order of the string. All right. And based on this new dictionary, where this is the original, for example, let's say if we follow A to Z is the original dictionary that we have. And since Jill has jumbled it up, so it can be any sequence random that we don't know. Okay. So now uh, this is it. You can pause the question video and watch it. Uh, read the question again. So here we have some constraints. So since uh, you're going to find multiple words, so that is considered as a test cases. So we have to uh, give the input as well, how many words that you're going to find as well. So this should be less than 1000. These are the constraints that we have. Length of the value P, P which is like new dictionary that we have it's always going to be 26 only since we have we're talking about the English characters. So it's going to have 26 letters only. And that's why this value will not change. After that, what is the length of the S? So the string that on which he's going to find like Jack is going to find. So this could be anything between one or 100. All right. And these characters S and P should be in a lowercase. These are the constraint that we assume for this question. Uh, before Going out, so let's look at some of the examples that we have. Let's try to understand what exactly uh, it is expected in this question. And then I'll show you uh, what approach that you can use and how to solve this. Okay, 
So first input that we have is based on the number of test cases where we are going to use like two words and uh, we have a different sequence for the dictionaries and based on those sequence, we have the string S and we need to find that lexographical string. So we are going to work upon the two test cases. So one we have, this is the value of P where as you can see, this uh, contains all the 26 characters, but the order is different. And this is a uh, string that we have A, B, C, D for which we need to find the lexographical string. All right. And this is the second example that we have. And uh, this is the string for which we are going to find. So uh, first I'll show you what is the output and then I'll explain how we are getting that output. So for example, for this string, the output is going to be B, D, C, A. This is the output that we got and I'll help you like how we got that output, how to find this lexographical string. And for the second example, this is the string that we have and the output that we have is a code beta. So now let's try to understand. So basically, as you know, if you're already familiar with the strings in Python or any other programming language, so this can be considered as a subscript table. So that means we have like index for each string, which says like P here has index zero, then index one, then L as index two, Likewise, if I write till the Z, it's going to be index of 25. So either you can, uh, if you are using Python, you can directly write P of uh, like this string. Let's say if you have uh, assigned this as a P, if you just say P of any of the character like A, and it will return you the index value in the code. Okay, so we're not talking about this. So let's assume we have all the index values from zero to 25. And for this string that we have, Let's try to uh, identify what are the values that we have, like what is the index value. For example, let's say this is the string that we have A, then B, then C and D. So in a given string P, what is the value or the, what is the index position that we have? So here uh, decides the A, which is which could be 24, right? So because this is 25, so I'm, uh, like this we have as a 24. Then let's find the next character that we have, which is B. So where is the character B? Here we have. And what is the length? What is the index value for that? So again, you can put that string in a code and you can get it in a seconds. But if you want to count, you can count as well. So we have. To... So this is we have as a 13. So you can just uh, take this. You can pause the video. You can read the string and you can identify what is the index value that we have. After that, we have this value C here. So B is that we have as a 13, then it will become. So C, the index version that we have is a 19. And then D, which we have here. So it will make the index version 18. So given for this given string, these are the index position. And with respect to the definition of the lexical string, so we need to sort this so that we will get these values in the order of the index. So for example, so after sorting this, what is the smallest value that we have, which is 13. After that, the second smallest value we have is 18. Then what is the next smallest value, which is 19. And after that, we have 24. So if you sort that in ascending order, so which gives us which character comes first in this dictionary as the definition of lexical string. So once you get this, once you sort this indexes, we are going to get the character of that index. So what is the value that we have for 13 is going to be B and for 18. So basically I'll write it here. All right. So for 13, let's write it here for 13. We have B and for 18, what is the value that we have D and for the character like index position 19, then the third one we have C and for 24 A. So this is nothing but your string as the output as you can compare. So this is how first you need to find in a given dictionary, which is a P for and you need to find all the index positions, which is where it is, uh, wherever that index position is of this string S for each character. Once you find that, whatever the index position that we get, you need to sort that value after sorting. So we have, you have to reference back it to the character where that uh, value, like uh, which character is at that index position. So while you're sorting it in ascending order, there you get the output that is expected as a lexical order. So if you perform the same for this, like for example, if you find where is A here and then you have a T here, then we have I, then we have your V, 
Okay, then we have your E and D, O and where's C. So, and corresponding for each value, you're going to write the index position of it. So for example, here it's going to be 25, then it will be 23. I guess it will be then 21. Then we have like 20, 19, this will be, I guess, so 18. So now we have this different string. So this P and this P is not same. These are the both different string. So we will find the index position for each of this string from the S in the string P. Then you will uh, do that sorting value. And for after sorting, you will rewrite reference back to the actual value that we have and which will get you the string as a code bit. All right, so this is the logic that we have. Now you can use any of the programming language that you are comfortable with. Since CodeBeta provides a lot of several options in terms of like uh, you can use C++, Java or Python or even C as well. So since I am from the Python background, I'm going to explain you the code for the Python. And also I will uh, give you the code for the rest of the programming language as well. So which you can take a reference, try it on your own. And if you have any kind of a queries, so you can let me know that in a comment section. All right, so now let's try to understand what is the Python implementation is going to be. So basically we are going to create a function saying that a uh, smallest lex uh, lexographical string on which we are going to pass the value as P and S. First thing that we are going to do is we are going to create a dictionary of that string P that we have and we are going to assign a value to it. So basically this is the uh, dictionary comprehension that we are going to use. So what it will give us, so for example, let's say in, uh, let's go back to the example that we have. For example, we have like, I'll get uh, just three characters, P, O, and L. So for example, let's say we have this P, O, and L. So it, here it will take it as a key value. Dictionary is a key and the value, it's going to be the index for this one, one, and this one, that's two. And similarly, whatever the characters that we have, it will assign the character as a key and the uh, index position as a value. And once it will get, it will save or in a order dictionary so that we can reference back from the character. So basically, if you want to find anything in a dictionary, so you can say the name of the dictionary, order dict, and you can pass the character at P and it will refer you back to what is the index position that we have. All right. So that's why we are going to create a dictionary or even you can create a list, but with a list, the problem is that you have to manage the index in other list as well. So that's why here the dictionary is a good option to store the value of key and value pair, like uh, the key value, the character and the index of that. So after that, we are going to perform the sort here. So in the sort, we are going to pass this string S and we are going to use this Lambda function as a character. And for, we are going to refer this character from each what are the characters that we are going to get from this S? We are going to pass that and we will find and we will sort in that order. So once you do that, we are going to use the join method to merge all the values so that we will get the final string because here we are working on the individual strings. Again, you have to like, as you can see in the output, we are going to get the result in a complete one single string, right? So once you do that, here we are going to get the result. And after that, so what is the thing? Uh, this is the only function that you have to no, and after that, we will talk about the input that we're going to take from the user. So the input in terms of the first thing, what is the number of test cases that we're going to run? So if that means how many times you're going to pass the value of P and S, and we're going to say the store the results. That's why we have created an empty list because we have to give the output values, right? And then for the number of test cases, for example, here, let's say we are talking about the two test cases, then we have to take the user input twice. Or let's say if you take the test cases like five, then we have to take five times from the user input. So that's why we are running that in a loop. So for i in range of this t, it value will change to two based on what value we have provided here. It will take those many number of times the input. And in the result, it will call the function that we have written. It will pass the value of p and s, and it will append the results into this list. And after that, we want to print those as a single value. So I'm just reading these values from the list and I'm just printing this individual value. So that's it. This is a very easiest question compared to the entire code beta questions that you can expect. So uh, let's run this and let's see. Here we have, let's play this. So here we need to enter the number of test cases, which are two. And since uh, I have stored this value so that it will not take a lot of time, the same example that I've shown you 
in the slide. Okay, let's go back here. This is the value of the P and what's the value of S that we have? This is a string. So you can get all, okay, not here, sorry. So we need to paste it here, not space as well. So even if I, while I was copying, there was a space. And even if I add that space, it will consider as a string. So that will not be, it will throw some error. So make sure if you're copying this input, so you're taking the value correctly. Okay, so here we have, I'll just make a little bit like this. So we have this value as P, second value. And let's give the input as the second string that we're going to find. Uh, okay. So this is what, let's enter. And these are the output, as you can see. Uh, for the first thing that we have given, it is going to be BDCA and the second one that is going to be code beta. So you can play around with this and you can pass different values on the different test cases that you have. So like I said, here's the code for uh, the programming languages that in C++, I will you know pause the video and go through it. So I will just scroll a little bit. And even I have added some of the comments so that if you are a complete beginner, you will understand uh, what exactly which part is, why we are doing that and what we are trying to write. So I'll scroll a little bit and I'll pause so that uh, take a screenshot or pause the video, read the code, try it on your own on the machine. This will be the code for the Java here. And so these are the things that we have. Right. So this is what the solution that we have. In case if you want this solution in the text file or in the code file, do let us know in the comments. So we will add this in the description. And uh, that is what the first question that we have. Like I said, this is going to be an entire series of different questions. And that's why assuming that there will be a lot of beginners. So I have started with really, really easy question. So if you want more kind of these questions, do let us know that in the comment and show like if you have solved some of the questions or if you want any specific answer for the question so do let us know that problem statement as well so we will come up with the video for that and that's it for the video guys and as always we are going to share a lot of different uh related updates and uh, more information on the code beta on other social media channels as well all the links are given in the uh, description so if you like this video uh, do let us know in the comments also if you are new to the channel subscribe hit the like and bell button so that's it for the video i will see you in the next one